Hey guys, I'm Bobby O'Shields with We Do Work Boats in South Florida. Come on inside and we'll give you a tour. Welcome to our We Do Boardroom, or as I like to call it, our creation station. This is where we sit with our team and talk about new ideas to help us accomplish multitasks on the water, not just aquatic vegetation removal. As you look at the PowerPoint here, you'll see that some of the issues we face globally are invasive aquatic weeds, toxic algae, fish kill, oil and gas spills, garbage, and silt and sediment collection. Taking a look at some of the more common invasive aquatic weeds, we have hydrilla, water chestnut, cattails, Eurasian milfoil, duckweed, and water hyacinth. These are weeds that are found globally and can be handled in a multitude of different ways with different attachments that are quick and easy to use with the Weedoo. The TC3012 comes standard equipped with a side-mounted boom mower that can be used to cut weeds beneath the surface down to a depth of five foot, but can also be articulated at different angles and different depths for a variety of slopes and embankments throughout your waterway. Some of the weeds that you'll be dealing with using your cutter are gonna be the Eurasian water milfoil, hydrilla, and cattails. Uh, once they're cut, they're gonna float up to the surface and that's where you'll use the front end loader to skim and harvest that vegetation off the surface. One of the really cool quick change implements for the Weedoo, it's actually my favorite, is the Weedoo root rake. This couples to the front of the boat, takes a few moments to switch over, you can use a root rake to rip and tear out vegetation such as cattails right from the bottom of the shoreline. And once you can get the roots of these materials out of there, you're not gonna have to deal with them growing back. Some other waterway pollutants you'll come across can be garbage and fish kill. A really cool device for removing these materials from the water is our Weedoo skimmer bucket. It's part of the front end loader quick change attachment. Swaps out really easily and is very effective at harvesting fine materials that you'll find intertwined with the garbage in the waterways. One of the worst things we can have in our waterways are oil or gas spills. Fortunately, Weedoo has an attachment for that as well. We have a Weedoo oil and gas spill attachment that once again quickly connects to the front end loader and attaches to the built-in hydraulic system to operate a patented rotary drum that easily separates the oil or gas from the surface, skims it off, and contains it into a drum. The last side we have for you to look at is a very powerful one. As you'll notice, the image on the right is somebody using chemical herbicides to spray and kill the aquatic vegetation. Whereas the slide to the left, you'll see it's been treated mechanically and the vegetation is being extracted, harvested, and removed from the waterway. The main difference you'll see is the dark, murky water. And what that does is lowers oxygen levels, creates an unhealthy waterway environment, and over time builds up detritus waste. After years of treatment with chemical and herbicide spray and the detritus waste starts to build up, we do has a very effective quick change attachment for cleaning up these waterways as well. Our We Do Silt Sucker Plus is a mini hydraulic dredge that couples to the front of the boat and uses a hydraulic agitating head to stir up and suck the detritus waste, the muck, the sediment off the bottom and remove it from the lake, can discharge it through a three inch hose off the back of the boat up to a distance of 300 feet. Now that we've learned more about some of the We Do Quick Change attachments, let's take a look in the shop, give you a brief overview of your boat, and then we'll go down to the water and do some more training. This is our brand new We Do TC3012. We've had a lot of new updates and features added to it. There's a lot to cover here, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So this is the We Do front end loader. It's equipped with a quick change front end system, which is what makes it so easy to swap out between different front end work implements. This particular bucket we're looking at here is the We Do standard vegetation uh, material removal bucket. It's aluminum frame, however the tines are 5 a steel and this is good for a majority of the waterway vegetation collection that you'll be doing with your machine. The We Do front end loader is capable of removing up to 500 pounds a minute of vegetation. This loader lock device is used to pin the loader in the up position before attempting any service or maintenance on the loader arms or trying to crawl or walk underneath the loader arms, be advised there is a loader safety lock located inside the 
support loader arm tower. Step one would be to raise the loader arms into the up position. Step two, remove the hitch pin as you see here. Step three, raise the lock into place, making sure it contacts the loader cylinder. Step four, insert the hitch pin into place, lock it as you see here, and now you're free to perform maintenance as necessary. In the event of emergency, a fire extinguisher is located directly beneath the operator's seat, as you see here. To remove it, pull back this plastic pin, grab it, remove the safety pin, and you are now ready to use the fire extinguisher. Point in the direction of fire, push down on the thumb latch. The WeDo features an 11 gallon fuel cell that's mounted inside the hull underneath the rearmost hatch. The fuel fill is located just to the operator's left side and there's a key that comes with your keychain to unlock the fuel cap and add fuel to the vessel here. After adding fuel, be sure there's no debris that went in there and make sure to reinstall the fuel cap nice and tight with the key provided. We're taking a look at the tail end of the WeDo TC3012. There's a lot going on back here. So this is what we call our WeDo power pack. The engine, uh, basically all the mechanics that power the vessel are located back here. We've got a 25 horsepower Kubota triple cylinder diesel engine, which connects to our triple section hydraulic pump. Each outdrive has their own respective hydraulic pump. And then the third pump is shared between the front end loader and the cutter. We have our directional control valves, which operate our twin stern outdrives. And up underneath here, which you can't really see from this angle, we'll take a look at it a little bit later, you've got our cyclonic hydraulic fluid reservoir. That's part of the magic behind the WeDo. This whole system runs on only three and a half gallons of eco-friendly hydraulic fluid, where in reality, a machine with this capability would take more along the lines of 25 to 30 gallons of fluid. So that cyclonic uh, fluid reservoir is really what makes all this happen on such a, a small, lightweight scale. Over here, you're taking a look at our port outdrive. The hydraulic outdrive with this we do, in conjunction with this 12-inch steel dual blade weed and mud prop, is what makes this thing dance on the water like a skid steer does on land. This boat has instant maneuverability, is very agile, and very powerful in whatever type of uh, water where you're gonna put it in. Some operators find that adding a little weight to the back of the buoyancy compensator helps give them more um, lift capability on the front end. So these pie plates, they screw right off and you can add water or sand or something of your choice to add a little weight back there for more digging capability up front. If you choose to add water, there are drain plugs located right under here that you can easily pull out and have the water drain out when you're done. Moving around to the starboard side of our vessel, over here on this side of the power pack, you'll see our main engine power control switch. So this switch turns the main power on and back off. You'll also notice three push button reset breakers over here. A 30 amp reset breaker for your main helm power, which sends power from the power unit to the front helm station. A 15 amp reset breaker that controls the bilge pump, which is located down inside the hull and then a 10 amp reset breaker, which is for this heat exchanging fan on the front of the power unit here. One safety feature you can keep in mind, if you're parking the boat at an outdoor storage yard or in a parking lot, you can take the main power switch off and bring it with you so that unauthorized people are uh, unable to power the boat. One of the most unique features about the WeDo, something that really sets us apart from the competition and gives us a cutting edge, is our side-mounted marine boom mower. You can boom out and cut in between pilings, boom back in after you reach a piling, boom back out and keep cutting. Uh, there's not enough great things I can say about this cutter. There's no doubt this side-mounted marine boom mower is something that really sets us apart and makes this machine stand out above the rest. The side-mounted marine cutter is the way to go. The WeDo 3000 series hull is a very unique design. It's hand-laid fiberglass, Kevlar reinforced, and it's a pontoon style hull. The most unique factor about this boat is that it will draft in only eight inches of water. 
It makes this boat very agile and very maneuverable in hard to navigate waterways. I'm sitting here in the seat assembly of the WeDo TC3012. I gotta say, it's really comfortable in here and there's a lot of creature comforts that go into place to make this a comfortable place to sit and work for eight hours out in the office. Uh, for starters, the control levers, this box pivots, which allows easier access into and out from the seat. These two handles here, the taller ones, control the out drive. So forward on both of them, engages both props in a forward direction, locks into neutral. Back on both of them will have us go in reverse. And then steering is done by a counter rotation. So in other words, forward on one drive, reverse on the other, and that'll spin the boat one way and opposite to go the other. The third lever here to the uh, port side controls our engine RPMs so or our throttle. Just uh, beyond my right knee is the loader control valve. This joystick here is what operates the loader. So pulling back on it will raise the loader arms. Pushing forward on it will lower the loader arms. Pulling to the left will tilt your bucket back and pushing to the right will dump your basket forward. Beyond that are more controls for the hydraulic cutter arm. You've got four levers here. The first one is our main arm that controls the height of my cutter. The next one is a secondary that controls the distance to and away from the boat with the cutter arm. The third one articulates the mower head and the fourth one with the safety device here, this activates the cutter. So when you're ready to activate the cutter, you push up on that ring, push forward and that will engage the cutter. Then off to my right, closer to me, is our, um, our dash panel. Over here, we have a cluster of gauges, including our fuel level, our volt reading, our engine temperature, oil pressure, engine RPMs, hour meter. We have a really nice uh, new feature, is a built-in depth finder, air and water temperature. And then we have some controls over here, such as the uh, bilge pump, the bilge pump is on an automatic float switch, but you can also test it manually with this switch here. Then we have our port and starboard trims. Like I said, they trim up and down independently. And then another nice feature is we add a 12 volt hot here in the instance that you want to um, have some auxiliary power for additional lighting. Just beyond the port and starboard trim switches is an auxiliary switch that you can use to power some auxiliary device if you choose, such as adding lights to your machine if that was your choice. Um, over here underneath all that, we have a USB outlet to charge maybe a, a cell phone or a tablet. Just down to my right, underneath this box is a cubby and drink holder, so you can store a nice drink there, or if you have your phone or tablet charging, you can store it in here where it's high and dry. Speaking of high and dry, one attachment you might want to consider for your boat, especially you know somewhere like uh, we are in sunny South Florida, is this operator bimini top. It includes an overhead storage with this Velcro pouch, where you can store items such as keys um, and keep them out of the way. We've got the boat and the truck lined up. We're gonna go ahead and hook up to the truck and launch her in the water. Before we do that, I just wanna go over a few tricks and tips on how to hook it up safely and get you to the waterway and to work. With the truck, you'll need a two inch ball and a four way flat light connector to tow this rig. So we've got our ball lined up with the coupler. We're gonna go ahead and lower the trailer jack right onto the ball. Make sure that sits on there nicely. Crack up the wheel a little more. Go ahead and pull this handle. Relieve your trailer jack. Now watch your fingers with this coupler, but pull back on here, push in on the coupler, push forward. And then we have a safety clip that goes over it. Make sure it doesn't come uncoupled. And we have our safety chains. Take them, secure them underneath the vehicle. Then we'll hook up our lights. Make sure there's no debris or mud or anything caught in there. Now that we have our trailer connected to the truck, it's important to ensure that the boat is properly secured to the trailer. There are five points of fastening of the boat to the trailer that we're gonna go over. On the front of the boat over here, there are two polyester nylon straps. They affix to the bow. One on the starboard side, 
one on the port side. Then we tighten those up with this crank. We want it nice and tight, but not too tight. That's good there. Now moving on to the back of the boat, there are two transom straps that affix the transom to the trailer. So you take this strap here, hook the top part of it to the hook on the boat, take the bottom, attach it to the hook on the trailer, pull it snug. You want it um, tight, but not too tight. Just enough, maybe you can get a few fingers back there. Pull down on the handle. Make sure there's no excess bound up beneath the buckle. Take the extra, loop it over like this, and then take the Velcro and attach it like so. The last strap to attach is the one that holds this cutter down in place. Hook it back here. Uh, be careful not to attach it to the hydraulic hose there. Go underneath this arm, bring it back to itself. Pull the slack out of it. Once again, pull down, grab the excess, loop it over, Velcro it in place. And that just makes sure that this cutter isn't gonna bounce out of its cradle while you're going down the highway. All right, now we're down here at Lake Weedu after a short drive through our parking lot. We're gonna do some pre-launch preparations. One thing I do wanna point out, we've got our operator T-top on there. It does snap on with two, two clips and Velcro. You don't wanna leave that on there when you're driving down the highway. It was okay for the purposes of driving through our parking lot. I wanna make you guys aware of that. But let's keep moving and I'll show you some of the pre-launch stuff. Most importantly, putting our drain plug in. Let me show you how that goes. Down here on the transom in the center of the boat, there's a spot where the drain plug gets installed. Make sure there's nothing on the threads, nice and clean. Reach up underneath here. Twist it in hand tight. And then we take our trusty 9 16 wrench. Just give it a quarter to half turn. Just want it tight, but not too tight that it'll lock up those brass threads. Part of our pre-launch is also removing our transom straps. Like we already know, uh, we talked about before, there are two of them on the back of the boat. So we'll go ahead and take these two off, carry them with us. As we walk around the back of the boat, now's a good time to go ahead and turn our main power switch on. Go ahead and take off the cutter strap as well. And it's also a good time to take off the uh, cutter sheath. And we'll take all these things and we'll stow them safely in the back of the truck. We never want to throw anything on the ground. That's a good way for somebody to trip on it or for us to forget it at the end of the day. Next, while we're up here, go ahead and loosen the bow straps. And what I do is unclip them. Just hook them on the tower here for the time being. And what we're gonna do is raise the loader bucket into the up position to make it easy for us to launch the boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and crawl up there. I'm gonna go ahead and come up here on the boat. Take our key. Install the kill switch. Make sure no one's behind our props. Make sure we're in neutral. Set it to about one third throttle. Go ahead and start her up. Now what I'm gonna do, as I mentioned before, is I'm gonna raise the loader bucket up and out of the way so the trailer uh, so the boat launches easily off the trailer now once we have our loader arms up and the bucket in that leveled off position we can go ahead and dismount the vessel what we'll do is walk out this way and then this makes for an easy place to grab onto as we walk down from the boat onto the trailer 
And then we're gonna go ahead and hook the straps back up to the bow for our launching purposes. Now after we hook the boat back up to the bow straps, it's important to leave some slack on it. But be sure to lock it back in place. If we're in an, uh, an area where it's too steep or too sloped, we don't want that boat sliding off the trailer. So like I said, make sure that we're locked in to the retrieving position. And at this point, we are ready to launch. Now let's get this boat to work. All right. When back in the trailer into the water, we want to go back just far enough that the back of the boat floats up off the trailer like you see there. That's a perfect launch. Now some boat launches may vary, some may be easier than others. This is about what you should expect to find in your neck of the woods. So we're happy with what we've got. As long as you can do it safely, get out there and do it. You might find it easier to launch with two guys, one guy on the boat with one guy backing you in. But a lot of times you're working by yourself anyway. So that's what we're gonna do today. Go ahead, remove your bow strap. I like to take it and just hook it onto the rubber here so that when we come back from working, the strap is located right where we left it, ready for us to hook the boat back onto the trailer. Watch your head as you come up, grab on nicely, walk onto the boat. You've got plenty of grab handles as you work your way onto the boat. Step into the operator helm assembly, slide the throttle control box forward, affix your kill switch, now is also a good time to go ahead and lower our outdrives into the water. You can hear them as they go down when the boat's not running. Takes about 10 to 15 seconds. They're both fully down. Now we'll go ahead and start the boat up. Now we're gonna go ahead and raise our throttle a little bit. And I'll go ahead and ease her off the trailer. Moving on to our cutter deployment. Um, there's a couple steps that we need to uh, take into account for launching and safely using our cutter. Uh, there are four levers that you will see here located to the operator's right hand position. The first lever is the main boom. That's the boom right here and that's our up and down or height control of the cutter. The next lever is our secondary boom. That's this one here and that swings the cutter head uh, away from the boat or back toward the boat. The third one is our mower articulation. So that controls the angle of the actual mower head. Then the fourth one here activates the mower itself. Now there's a black safety ring on here that prevents us from accidentally engaging the mower. So you have to push up on that safety ring before we can push forward to activate the mower. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire the boat up and then we'll uh, deploy our cutter. Now the first thing we're gonna do to uh, deploy our cutter is uh, open a ball valve that's located right behind the operator's left hand shoulder. It's located right here. We're gonna open that and what that does is allow us to articulate the mower head. Uh, in other words, if that's closed, we can't open it and it helps keep that mower head from drifting out or, or falling while we're not using the cutter. The main boom mower is activated by this lever here. So we're gonna pull up on it toward herself only for a quick second, just long enough for the cutter to become free of this cutter cradle down below. So pull up, and that's good there. That's just enough so that it's free and clear of that cradle. We're gonna move on to the secondary, and we're gonna boom out by pushing away from us. Now, once we're clear of the side of the boat, we can go ahead and lower that back down toward the water level by pushing away with the main boom lever. Next, we can move on to the mower articulation and boom that out by pushing away, like you see here. Now, from here, you can determine how deep you wanna go, or if you wanna cut along the embankment, you might wanna boom out with the secondary a little further. If you wanted to cut overhead, if you had some, um, you know, some shrubs or some tree limbs that were encroaching over the embankment, 
you can boom the mower up overhead like so or obviously if we're going to be cutting beneath the water surface we will boom it down into the water like this now when we're done cutting we're going to retrieve it by booming out of the water by pulling back on the first lever bring the mower head in by pulling in on the mower head lever looks like we need to come up a little bit more so we'll raise this up take the secondary lever boom in now here we can see we need to raise the mower head up a little higher so we're going to take the main and pull up on it again and always be careful not to make any contact with the valve assembly back here so that looks like we're high enough there we'll take the secondary and boom in that looks good take the main lower it safely into the cradle and then once we're done we'll reach back and close this ball valve now once we're clear of the side of the vessel I like to lower it back toward the water and keep our center of gravity low at all times so we're going back to our main boom and we're pushing away to go down we'll take our secondary boom out farther and from here we can cut above the water line we can go down and cut underneath the water surface whatever it takes so here we're in about a foot and a half of water or so to activate the cutter push up on the safety ring and push forward on the control we're now cutting when we're cutting along the shoreline and we want to try and cut in a straight line the easiest thing to do is set the cutter in place and then with our left hands over here in the throttles what we're going to do is fully engage the starboard drive and then just use the port drive to kind of steer ourselves in a straight line so as you can see I'm not using that starboard drive I'm just using the port control to keep ourselves in the right path Now as we get a buildup of accumulation on the cutter, easiest thing you can do is come to a stop and then back up and you'll notice how the debris just floats right off the tip of the cutter. That's something you'll want to do regularly as buildup can occur. And here's an example of how we can use the cutter to reach up overhead and trim back some limbs. So we'll gently raise the cutter up, slide into the tree line. Trim those limbs away. That's actually a good example. We came across a branch that was a little too thick, the cutter stopped, and basically what happened is the fluid just goes through a relief block. When we're done cutting, first thing we'll do, turn the cutter off by pulling back on the mower activation handle. We'll throttle down, take our main, pull up and raise this to us. Go to the one labeled mower, the third one here. Pull the mower ahead and articulate it back toward you. Take the secondary, swing it back toward the boat. Now when we come in, make sure we're high enough to clear the side of the boat and make it into the cradle. Looks like we'll have to go up a little bit here. So we'll take the main, go up. Now back to the secondary, swing in. And once we're right over that cradle, we'll push down with the main one. Now if we're done cutting, what's the next step? Make sure we close that ball valve, that's right. If there's some really important safety features I wanna go over with you while we're out here. I've got the bucket in the up position right now, rolled back, boat's off. I just wanna show this uh, to you right now. 
There's two decals right now that you can see out in front of us. When we're traveling across the water with or without a load, it's very important. The bucket needs to be in the down and rolled back position at all times. So when we're going across the water, we want the bucket in the down and rolled back position. At this point, we're free to move about the water as we please. We never want to travel with that bucket in a high position, especially with the load in there or any amount of speed, okay? Important, low and slow. Now it's different when we're collecting vegetation. Obviously we're gonna roll the loader down, roll the bucket down, and gently slide into the vegetation we're gonna pick up. The best way to pick up vegetation that's accumulated along the shoreline, like you see here, is to work perpendicular to the shoreline. So come in, roll the bucket back, raise the arms up slightly, back up a little bit, move over a few feet and do that again. So bucket down, roll back, load our arms down, bucket tilted down, drive in, start to roll back, come to neutral, raise up, back up slightly. Now we'll do it again, arms down, bucket down, drive in, start to roll back, raise up. Do that a few times and we clear out this whole edge of vegetation that's already been cut. Now when we're ready to dump the load, what we'll do is drive over to the shoreline, which is right over here, nice and easy. Raise our load up, drive to shore. Go ahead and start to tilt the bucket down. Fling the load right out of there. Now that you've seen the Weedoo with the side-mounted boom mower and the front-end loader with that standard material bucket, I want to play with one of my favorite toys out here and show you what this thing can really do. This is the root rake. We're going to show you how quickly and easily front-end attachments swap out. Then we're going to go out, uh, back out into the water and show you how I can rip up these cattails, root and all, effortlessly. All right, so let's do that now. Swapping out front-end attachments with the Weedoo work boat is very easy, actually. We're going to start by turning the machine back on. Raising up on the loader bucket. We're gonna step over here. We're gonna undo these clips. When we undo them, I like to hang them behind the synchronizer bar. That way when we attach a new piece, the cable doesn't get caught in between the two plates. So undo these two clips, hang them behind the synchronizing bar. We're gonna get back into our operator seat. Gonna lower the bucket down onto the surface and then start to roll back. Just like that. That's how easily we detach from one bucket. Now we'll move over to the next. Now, we'll come back, put the pins back in place. And we're ready to get to work with our new attachment, the We Do Root Rake. When we use a root rake to uproot vegetation like these cattails from the shoreline, we're gonna basically set ourselves up in position and what we're gonna do is go ahead and lower the loader arms down to the water, slightly angle the root rake so the tines are just beneath the surface, and we're gonna go ahead and drive right in to that pile of cattails in front of us, okay? Slowly articulate back or roll back on the bucket and just let the boat do the work. The leverage of the machine and its weight pries those roots right out from the lake bottom and picks them up root and all.
Now that we're coupled to it, we'll go ahead and lock it in place with these pins again. Now just a couple more things to hook up with the dredge. We're going to go ahead and hook up our quick change hydraulic hose connections and the three inch discharge hose that goes from the front of this tube here down the side of the boat and connects to a bracket on the back of the boat. Okay, this is a hard rubber three inch transfer hose that's going to go from the end of the uh, dredge or snorkel head here. It couples with this three inch cam lock here, goes down the side of the boat, is going to connect into that bracket and from there is where you can connect the remainder of your discharge hose up to that distance of 300 feet like we talked about earlier. So open up these tanks, place the female end over the male end, make sure it's on even, and start to pull these clips back into place. The trick is to pull back on these evenly, a little bit on one side and then the other, and then they'll click into place, give it a little tap, and they're locked in. And we'll follow this tube around the other side, come around the back, and lock it into that clamp. There's a pair of quarter 20 bolts. We'll use two 7 16 wrenches to lock that into place. So we've got the bolts out, took the top bracket off, set the hose into place, set the top bracket on, set our bolts back in. All right. So we'll put our tools away and we'll connect our hydraulic hoses and then we'll start showing you how the dredge head works in this area. We've got the Silt Sucker Plus frame attached to the front end loader. We've installed our discharge hose. Now what we're gonna do is show you how to hook up the hydraulics. This is what powers it, okay? What we're gonna be doing is taking the fluid from the cutter by way of these quick disconnects. So we'll go ahead and pull back here, release this one. Pull this way, release that one. And then take the two that come with the dredge and put them in place of those cutter ones that you just disconnected. So simple, male goes into female, female goes into male. Make sure there's nothing on the tips of those, make sure they're nice and clean, help keep the system clean. Push in sturdy, until you hear that click, that's in place good. Same thing with this one, make sure there's nothing on it. Push in tight, until you hear that click, we're locked in. As a uh, precautionary measure, while we're doing the uh, silt and sediment removal with the dredge, every once in a while, while the dredge is running, you'll want to bring it up closer toward the surface and get some clean water rushing through it to help push back any debris that might start getting stuck within our discharge hose. At the end of the day or at the end of the project, once we're done running uh, silt or sediment through, once again, we'll want to make sure we run that we run clean water through all the hoses. So from the dredge straight through all the discharge hoses, you want clean water running through it so that that preserves your hoses and make sure that you don't have any debris or silt or sediment built up in those hoses in the long run. Another one of the work implements you can use with your WeDo is this really cool hydraulic pole saw. It stows and travels nicely in these cool aluminum cradles bolted onto the side of the boat here. It's very lightweight, it's a fiberglass handle, and the, the chainsaw head itself is 12 inches, so you can cut some nice thick branches with it. But one of the really cool features about this being a hydraulic pole saw, not only can you use it up overhead for tree limbs and branches, you can actually use it underneath the water level for trees or branches that are obstructing your uh, work boat's path. So we're gonna show you how to go ahead and hook this up to your hydraulic quick change, how to use it safely to cut tree limbs and branches. So using the WeDo uh, hydraulic pole saw is a real easy process. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect the quick change valves that power our hydraulic cutter. So we'll reach back here, disengage these, set them off to the side, replace those with the ends provided with your pole saw. We have our pole saw hooked up to the quick change hydraulic power beyonds. Next thing we're gonna do is turn the boat on, engage your cutter, Identify which branch we want to cut, make sure there's no power lines or any other obstructions. And then the pole saw is actually activated with this handle here. Uh. 
Now that this job is done, we're ready to take this boat, load it up, and move on to the next lake. So what we're gonna do is start to make our approach to the trailer. Make sure there's no obstructions, no boats coming at you, no swimmers, no any obstructions there may be. We're gonna start to make our approach, line up nice and square with the trailer. As I start to get close, I raise the loader, just so I can see underneath that loader cross member. I lower those bucket tines nice and level, make sure I'm nice and square, make my approach, and drive straight onto the trailer. That was a perfect approach. From here, the next thing we can do is remove our kill switch. We're gonna safely, slowly disembark the vessel. Walk around here, just the same way we mounted it. Now we're gonna dismount. Holding on, making sure you're not gonna slip or fall on anything. Work our way up here to our bow straps. Release some of this tension, give ourselves some slack. We're gonna give ourselves enough slack to walk toward the bow of the boat, connect these bow straps. I locked it back into place, so if I do slip, I've got something firm I can hold on to. As I make my way down here, I grab onto the bucket tines here. Hook it onto the bow eye, make sure that, that little fastener is closed tight. Walk around to the other side, grab this one. Same thing, snap it. Make sure the snap is fully closed. Walk back up this way. And winch the trailer on the rest of the way until it's to the front of the bow stops. Two more cranks. Once that bow reaches those bow stops, we'll go ahead and stop there. Gonna hop back on here. Bring our trims to the raised position. Once those trims are raised, go ahead, disembark the vessel again. Safely working my way off, always making sure I'm holding on to something. Now we'll go ahead and pull the boat out of the water. Thank you so much for taking the time today to learn more about the WeDo and the different products and services we can offer with the machine. Before we take this boat and move on to the next job, it's important we give it a walk around, put all the safety straps back in place. Very important, we also wanna make sure we're not transporting any aquatic hitchhikers. So any weeds that may be caught on the trailer from when we pulled the boat back out of the water, let's make sure we take those all off now. All right, nothing cleans waterways better than we do.